terrorism in all its forms continues to pose a direct threat to security and prosperity of South Asian countries and its people. Bangladesh is also facing a new wave of terrorism due to the growing influence of several international Islamist terror outfits in the country. Despite strict counter-terrorism efforts by the government, the country continues to reel from a spate of violent extremism and radicalization, leading to the revival of a number of homegrown militant organizations. We bring you a detailed report. In November 2019, an anti-terrorism court in Bangladesh handed death sentence to seven terrorists for plotting an attack on Dhaka's Holy Artisan Bakery in 2016 that killed at least 22 people in one of the worst attacks of the country. These terrorists were associated with Jamaatul Mujahideen Bangladesh, which operates under the umbrella of the global terrorist organization, the Islamic State. Amid the rising concerns of terrorism in the country, this incident prompted the government to launch massive counter-terrorism actions and wipe out Jamaatul Mujahideen and other such groups. However, the group reintroduced itself with new leadership and revamped fighting strategies and formed an ultra-radical offshoot Neo-JMB, which also refers itself as the Islamic State of Bangladesh. These terrorist outfits not only use the training and indoctrination methods of large terror organizations like Al-Qaeda and the Taliban, but have also developed stronger international links with the Islamic State. Neo Jamaatul uh, Mujahideen Bangladesh emerged in 2014 uh, in Bangladesh. Before that, uh, we had uh, Jamaatul Mujahideen Bangladesh, JMB. Uh, this was Al Qaeda allied group, but Neo JMB is Islamic State allied group. Its ideology is uh, linked to Syria uh, and it is uh, opposed to uh, democracy in Bangladesh. It wants to establish a Syria based rule in Bangladesh by uprooting democracy. This Neo JMB uh, group is using uh, sophisticated uh, weapons unlike uh, the JMB group which was using only bombs. Their cadres are in uh, contact with various other Islamic State inspired groups in uh, several other countries like Malaysia, Philippines and uh, several other places and they try to raise, uh, raise funds from them. Curtailing funding and money laundering for Bangladeshi terrorist groups is a significant challenge for the authorities. There are a large number of external and internal sources of terror financing, which are used for recruiting and training the cadres of extremist groups like NGOs, charities and donations, self-funding, criminal activities like robbery and legitimate businesses in several sectors such as banking, healthcare, education or real estate. Meanwhile, Pakistan's notorious inter-services intelligence is also providing monetary support to train terrorist groups in Bangladesh to carry out terror strikes in the region and other parts of South Asia. It is a very dangerous organization for the entire uh, Southeast Asia continent and this organization has been uh, getting funds and a lot of uh, resources from the uh, Pakistani establishment which operates through its high commission uh, based in Dhaka, Bangladesh. Recently there has been you know, uh, very grave uh, charges and offenses involving very high senior ranking uh, diplomats of the Pakistan embassy who have been caught red-handed in uh, in funneling you know fake currency and well, of Indian domination and other uh, currency to these groups you know to carry out their activities of you know terror and hate according to authorities in Bangladesh Islamic State is using a network of recruiters to hire new recruits as well as social media platforms like Facebook Twitter and telegram to spread their doctrine among youth and establish undercover networks. Besides the Islamic State, the Rohingya crisis also remains a potent threat to Bangladesh's security and stability. Several media and intelligence reports have revealed that Pakistan's military intelligence and spy agency, the ISI, have close connections with Jamaat al Mujahideen and other small terror groups operating at Bangladesh Myanmar border. 
The report suggests that these agencies are involved in radicalizing and providing terror training to Rohingya refugees based in Bangladesh. Pakistan is basically trying to use Rohingya crisis for its own uh, advantage, as you rightly said, to advance its uh, terror agenda. However, it's a total hypocrisy. Uh, basically, it is using to advance its uh, terror agenda. Uh, they have created uh, uh, one terror group called ARSA. This uh, uh, terror group in 2017 attacked uh, a police station in Myanmar. So uh, that was the, actually the main reason behind uh, Myanmar uh, law and, uh, enforcement authorities going after these Rohingyas, which led to their exodus. Uh, after that, they also have a Huji Arakan group. Uh, this uh, group was created by uh, Pakistan. Uh, in this group, they have recruited people, uh, um, Rohingya people who live in Pakistan. They send them regularly to Cox's Bazar and also to Myanmar to uh, create uh, uh, you know, a law and order problem. And uh, many of these uh, uh, you know, uh, Huji Arakan people have been uh, involved in te uh, terror activities. Uh, and uh, it is feared that uh, this um, Arakan uh, corridor uh, of Rohingyas could uh, very well be turned into a jihadi corridor. Several pieces of evidence have time and again proved that Pakistan is providing protection, training, strategic planning, financial assistance, and equipment to terrorist and insurgency groups operating in the region to destabilize neighboring Afghanistan and India. India has made efforts domestically and along with Bangladesh to counter the threat posed by Pakistan-backed terror groups. However, with terrorists adapting to exploit new technologies and new tactics, the threat of terrorism will continue to pose a big challenge to Bangladesh's peace and security.